you call a beat patient. How long can we be patient? We want our freedom and we want it now. We do not want to go to jail, but we will go to jail if this, this is a prize we must pay for love, brotherhood, and true peace. That was John Lewis at the March on Washington in 1963. He called on Americans to wake up. Welcome back to CBS This Morning. Former U.N. Ambassador Andrew Young knew Lewis for decades and considered him a friend. They fought in the civil rights movement together with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Andrew Young helped draft the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and later became the first African-American to serve as ambassador to the United Nations. He was also a U.S. congressman and, of course, the mayor of Atlanta. Andrew Young joins us from Atlanta. Good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Thanks for being with us. I know you met with, uh, with uh, John Lewis just last week. Can you tell us uh, what that last meeting was like? Well, I want to forget that last meeting because I saw then that he was weak. Mm -hmm. And I'd never seen him weak before. Yeah. Uh, John Lewis, when I saw him, was always the, the calm, quiet power of humility, integrity, and, and determination. He didn't say much, uh, but when he said a word, everybody listened. Mm -hmm. You've said because he was willing to put his life on the line for any word he spoke. Yeah, he demonstrated that over and over again. You've said that humility was his real power, which is very interesting because a lot of people think humility is a weakness. Well, that's true, but you have to remember back in 1961 when SNCC was formed, you had a hundred uh, young leaders from all over the South, and uh, Marion Barry, who became mayor of, uh, uh, of Washington, uh, was one of those leaders. The, the women, uh, all powerful, and yet he emerged as the leader of that group, and I think the reason was that he, he didn't fight for it. He wasn't lobbying for it. He was just—he was being himself. And he was one person that everybody could trust. The same thing happened to Martin Luther King in 1955. Uh, there were people who were fighting to be leaders of the Montgomery Improvement Association. He was in the back of the church uh, running the mimeograph machine, printing um, the flyers for the next day's demonstration. And when they had a log jam, they decided that he was the one that they could trust. I think humility is an underrated power and influence in our lives. When we think about the power of... You add that... Go ahead. I apologize. When you me. add... Go ahead. ...that integrity and determination to his humility, he's not going anywhere. He's not giving up. Yeah. Uh, he's going to keep getting in good trouble. When we talk about that good trouble... But he loved even his enemies. And I doubt that there's anybody in Congress that has more friends on the opposite side of the aisle, on the other side of the aisle, than John Lewis. He got along with everybody because he respected everybody, he loved everybody, and he saw the worth in everyone as a child of God. Ambassador Young, while we're thinking about uh, Congressman Lewis's personal qualities, the quality of resilience comes to mind. His philosophy of nonviolence was tested and tested severely. More than once, he was left unconscious in a pool of his own blood. How did he remain so resilient and so optimistic? Well, I don't think his optimis optimism so much is his faith and determination. I think we have faith in this country. We have faith in humanity. We have faith in God. We know this is my father's world. Dr. King said the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. But we have to bend that, that moral arc. And um, I think it's faith in God, it's faith in the country, and it's faith in that even in us flawed and you know, foolish human beings, 
uh, there is the capacity for us to come together as one in a time of crisis. And we've done that in our lifetime, my lifetime going back to the Second World War. Yeah. And when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And on, on the subject of getting going, the last time uh, we spoke to Congressman Lewis on this show, he said that the death of George Floyd and the movement that followed was another step on the long road toward freedom. How do you judge our journey on that road? Are we any closer today to Dr. King's dream? Well, we're much closer because I think the American people saw George Floyd die just as they saw John get beat up uh, on the bridge and just as they saw a little nude girl walking down the streets of Vietnam and decided that when they see this kind of inhumanity, they don't want to be a part of it. And so the American people said, that's not the America I believe in. I do not believe in policemen killing innocent men who are no threat. That's not America. And so it was America that rose up, all colors, all classes. I've been impressed with the way the business community even has realized that uh, they are also a part of a system that has not exercised the full rights and potential of all of the citizens. Uh, even if you look at it as a, a marketplace, uh, the market is at the bottom of the pyramid. And we see the essential workers uh, that are essential not only as workers, but they're essential as consumers. It doesn't matter what color they are. We've got to bring this economy back together, and we've got to bring the uh, the world economy back together. Yeah. yeah. And we've got to deal with all of those things that have held us back. Yeah. And John was willing to do that all his life. Yeah. And Ambassador Young, a man who at one time was inspired by John Lewis, continuing to inspire with your own words today. Thank you very much for, for being with us. Thanks and God bless you.